Hello everyone, this is your Divine Appointment. God bless you today. I hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful day. I'm sitting where you can see my tree. I just put my tree up the other day and uh, right next to my fireplace here. And um, I've just been enjoying putting Christmas up in my house. It's always so joyful to me to just make my mark and say, Lord, thank you. And just everything I do, every little part of Christmas is important. I don't want to get rushed and I don't want to get into I have to's. So I'm just going to put my one tree up this year and one smaller one up in my living room. This is my patio room where I do my videos. Um, here and on the other side of my trellis behind my couch. And I just like to be where there's light. And um, I like to see, um, I want you to see my tree and I want you to see get a little bit of Christmas while you're watching me. It's only a month, and it's already December, in December, so it's going to go in a hurry. You know, we were sharing something in my last video. We are talking about, blessed are those who seek after the Lord. In fact, the scripture actually says in Matthew 5, 6, <clears throat> blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. That's what the Lord says. He's not a man that he would lie. That's what his word says. So if he says that, if it's up to you then. It's just up to you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, I don't know about you, but I know this about me, that I already was in the world. I received Christ when I was in my latter 20s. And <clears throat> I was in church all my life. You know, it was always, you know, every Sunday and as much as I could, and I did all the things a teenager does to get involved with the things of God in the church that I was, we belonged to. But our church was very ritualistic, and it was very ceremonial, and it was very more pomp and more, um, <clears throat> how can I say it? I didn't have an intimate walk because I didn't know you could have one. So when I was born again, my whole life changed because... I um, I gave my life to Christ because I learned about the intimacy we can have in Christ Jesus. I learned that we can have an intimate walk. My kitty cat was getting in my way here. We can have an intimate walk with the Lord, and I didn't know that. I did not know we could. So I was born again through a television program. It was an early television program, <clears throat> and the people are long gone now. But I remember that uh, every day they were on at a certain time of the day, and I would watch it. And they would have guests on their program, and each guest would share their testimonies. I know I've shared this before, but many haven't heard this. And they would share their testimonies, and they would cry, and I'd see tears going on their face, and it was real. I could see that they were in divorces, um, their marriage was falling apart, but they received Christ, and they trusted God, and God put their marriages back together. God did what the Word of God says He will do. Blessed are those, blessed are those, it says in Matthew 5, 6, who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Sometimes we don't get it until we're falling apart. Sometimes we don't understand what it means um, <clears throat> to be filled with God. Because once we've gone through life and we're enjoying it. When we're going through life and enjoying it, we have ups and downs, yes, but we just don't get it yet that there's got to be more. And whatever that takes for you to bring you to that place that there's there's got to be more, God will do that in your life. God will do that in your life. But all I know is that in my life, God had a plan. He has a plan for all of us. And really, the amount of your hunger and thirst is all lined up with how quickly um, God can move upon your life. How quickly and how much time you spend hungry and thirsting, or if you're, like I mentioned before, like a wave toss, like James talks about a wave toss back and forth in the sea. He's neither here and he's neither there. He's neither here or he's here for a while and then he gets back in the world and he's there. He's at church and he thinks church is everything. It isn't everything. Church is not everything. It's a place you go <clears throat> to be filled and to be encouraged, but to go out. I'm so sorry to say that pretty much most churches today 
are just keeping you in the building. They don't really teach you to go out like Jesus did in the ancient days. We're supposed to go out and reach others. We're not supposed to keep it a, a big secret, our walk with the Lord. We're just not supposed to do that. The Word of God says, spread the good news. We're to go off into all the nations, meaning we're to reach all the peoples all around us. And if it is in the nations in another place, fine. I, I went to Mexico on different occasions and helped build churches. I went to Mexico in, in <clears throat> the most decadent and horrible um, lifestyles where people were just dirt, dirt, dirt poor and their houses were built with tires from cars and cardboard. Listen, I know what it's like to do without. I've been in the midst, and I've done without. I've been in the midst of those who have been really, really low and have absolutely nothing. And then they have children one after another and their little children are not getting cared for. You know, I know what it's like to have nothing, but you know, God says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. What is it going to take <clears throat> for you? I don't know. We're all different. But I know one thing. I don't want to wait. I did not want to wait. I was in my 20s when I received Christ, and I wished I wasn't. I wished I, I didn't take me so long. I was married already, and we were having our family. Our children were very little. I was searching and hungering so deeply, so much. But there was no one in my life who gave me the news the salvation news and I believe the Lord allowed me to walk through that time in my life so that I would understand what it is to hunger and thirst after righteousness and no one tells you how to get it. Now I know that um, if I knew enough I could have read the Bible and understood it but I didn't. I wasn't born again. I wasn't prayed for. No one took me aside and said come to a Bible study with me. No one said, I've got a really good church. You can learn and grow. And um, when you're born again, your life changes. When you give your life to Christ and you can still have your family, your friends, your relationships, with, everything's the same except you've got Christ in the middle of everything. And He changes us. He changes us. It's like a cleaning a fish. You know, when the Lord said to the disciples and called them from the lake of Gal Sea of Galilee from their fishing, you know, it was just like the fish. They cleaned the fish and then they, you know, they ate them. But you know what the Lord does? He cleans us. He doesn't do it shockingly and do it real quick. He does it very slowly. And according to how much we want to give to Him as well. When I was hungering and thirsting for the Lord, um, I wanted all I could get from the Lord. In fact, a scripture came with me this morning. I'm going to share it with you. This is what the Lord laid on my heart for you. God, Psalm 63 says, God, thou art my God. Early, early will I seek thee. Early in the morning will I seek thee. Are you seeking him early in the day? Are you really hungering and thirsting after him? And you start out your day searching and seeking for him and asking him and praying and talking to him? You see, praying is just talking to Him, sharing with Him, and giving Him your attention and sharing the, the things of your heart with Him. That's what prayer really, really is. And so, God, Thou art my God. And it says, Early, early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. Has your soul been thirsting for the Lord? Has your soul been thirsting for Him? I was going to put this down, but I'm going to read a little bit longer, a little bit more. <clears throat> He goes on to say, My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Are you thirsting? Is your land dry and thirsty? Are you all filled up with the world and rushing around and doing all kinds of fun things all the time? And when you get alone, you wonder why you can't hear from God. You wonder why you're not, you don't have a close relationship with Him as some people do. All those things. It's because you don't, you're not giving God first place in your life. You've got to give Him first place. It says, early in the morning will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, and my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, where there is no water, to see thy power and thy glory so that I have seen thee in the sanctuary. In other words, he wants to see the Lord in his life. Our sanctuary really is our temple. Our God is in our life. <clears throat> we can only spend an hour in church. 
or maybe two hours, but the rest of the week, of hours and hours and hours and hours and days and days, where are we? We need to spend that time with our Lord. We need to be seeking and thirsting. The Lord says in his word, those who seek, though blessed are they who, who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, Matthew 5, 6. Well, you know, I was going through that in my life. Early in the morning, I would pray. I would pray all during the day. But my prayers were just really consistent of just speaking and having just really talking with the Lord. Where are you, Lord? I'd look out the window seeing people doing different things. And I'd say, where are you, Lord? Where, where are you? Even in church on Sunday, I wasn't satisfied. There was things that were not satisfying me. And I think I mentioned in my other video that I told my husband, I said, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And you know, the Lord did show me. And as I was sharing in my latter video, um, when you really seek Him with your whole heart, when you really seek Him with your whole heart, you will be found by Him. You will be found by Him. He will find you. He will find you. If you're doing this, if you're truly, deeply seeking Him, now when I say that, I'm saying it, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something out of John Lake's book. It says, um, this pertains to healing. This pertains to anything that we're really totally desiring in our life. Okay? Uh, politicians talk about a paramount issue. Okay? That the issue that stands out by itself above all overs in the greatest and the largest um, and the most interest to the nation. This is the paramount issue. That's a politician. That's the way they feel and the way they talk, okay? But um, he was sharing that a woman testified in my hearing one day to this fact. She had been pronounced hopelessly and hopeless and was going blind. No human remedy could do her any good. Someone opened to her a dim way of the possibility of seeing through the power of God, that she might be able to see through the power of God. Somebody opened her heart to entertain the thought that God could do something for her. She was not well taught. See, as I was just sharing with you, when we're not taught, we just don't know. And I didn't know. No one told me. I wasn't taught that I could have more of God, or I would have gone for that a lot sooner. <clears throat> she was not very well taught, but she said this, that every day, at four, every day of four years, she gave up two and a half hours absolutely to expressing the desire of her soul for sight. She was ex absolutely to express the desire of her soul for her sight for two and a half hours of every day for four years. <clears throat> Not only expressing it in words, but calling the power of God to her that would recreate in her the function of the sight of her eyes and make her see again. At the end of four or four and a half years, she said, my eyes are well as they ever were, as they ever were. And it goes on to say that this is the reward of persistence, of a desire toward God. Your nature may have sent out just as, a, as deep a cry to God as my nature has and is still doing so. But is the cry to God continuous? You see, many people give up. Many people give up way, way too soon. It's like <clears throat> aborting a baby. When that child is delivered too soon, many times it does not live. You see, when we abort our prayers, we stop praying for us. For whatever it is, it's gone. It's done. It's finished. And... Um, So keep that in your heart and your mind, that we've got to be, um, our soul has to be so caught up, so filled, and so 100% taken with whatever it is. And I'm saying this about our walk with the Lord, but this goes for anything in our life. The soul is the paramount issue. How much is your soul really hungering and thirsting after God? How much is your soul really hungering and thirsting after God? And after maybe a healing in your life. Maybe you need to be restored in some area. Maybe you can't walk. Maybe you can't see. Maybe you, your, your hair is falling out. Maybe you've got sores on your body. Maybe you've got a condition in your organs in your body, your stomach. Maybe your lungs. 
You might have cancer. You, whatever. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, God will hear your prayers if you do not give up. It's got to be paramount. It's got to be paramount. And that's how it was for me. I was searching for God. I was searching for the Lord. I'm looking at my time. How much time I have left here? Just a second. And see how I'm doing here. I've got just a few more minutes. And you know something? As I sought for him with all my heart and soul, he started to open doors. He started showing me different people, meeting different people. And they would just come up and tell me things. And that's how I found this church. It was an awesome church. And this is the church we went to. And I was actually born again right at that same time through a neighbor. The sequence of events took place in my life. God intervened is what I'm trying to say. And when you put God first and he's the paramount soul cry, you will have an intimate relationship with him. And I've got more to share about this. I've got so much more to share. There was a time when I prayed diligently every night for a long period of time. I do, I do now, but this was a particular time in my life. And for a number of days, he just took me into the heavenlies with him. It was hard, hard to get through each day. I was caught up in the realm between heaven and earth. It was the most unusual, awesome feeling and an awesome experience I've ever had. But I spent time interceding and praying. And you know what? I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. As soon as I learned about that, that was my paramount cry out to God as well. How hungry are you for God? Are you hungering in searching after righteousness? Are you seeking for more of God in your life? Are you seeking for more of Him? For those that are hungry and thirsting for more of God, you shall be filled. The Lord, He's promised that to you in Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they. He says, blessed are you. You are so blessed of God. So blessed of God. Because He sees that you are truly hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And he says, for they shall be filled. You shall be filled, my friends. You shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. You know, when you read the word of God, don't just read it. It's your food. It's, it's your life. And you know, God will speak to you. Stop and let God speak to you through every paragraph you read. Stop wherever the Holy Spirit tells you. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. I cannot tell you, share with you how vital it is these last days we're living. We're not going to be here that much longer in this world. Jesus is going to be taking us soon. The world is so evil and there's so much darkness and it's getting worse and worse. I've got more to share about that on my next time with you. Some horrific things that I um, have discovered about the things that are happening in the world and I know they're bad and now things are getting worse but the good thing is it's Jesus Christ says when the world gets darker and darker his light will shine brighter and brighter is a noonday sun because you know what when while we're still here the Holy Spirit is still here in this world but once the Lord takes us out that light will, will just be gone and then we don't want to be left here so those of you who have not received Christ I want to pray with you right now Receive Jesus Christ. Hunger and thirst after him. This world can take you nowhere but down. It's doom and desolation for those that are in this world and are just living for this world. Live for Christ. Make friends with people who love the Lord and know how to pray. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not upon that own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge the Lord and he will bring this to pass for you. God bless you. Don't forget to thumbs me up. Check on my information down below. Support my ministry. I love you guys. I love you so much. I just wanted to share with you for a few minutes. Just encourage you to be intimate with the Lord and to get stronger and stronger. And I'm going to talk to you more about that as well. I've got more to share. So much more to share. I love you. Father, and if any of you have not received Christ, just do that right now. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Just say these words after me. Jesus, come in my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I've sinned. I have fallen short the glory of God. 
I have sinned. Lord, take my heart, take my life, and use me to your glory. Help me to find friends that will help me to grow. Help me to find the, the right ministry or the church or the place or a Bible study where I can learn and grow. I ask you, Lord, to do this for me because you're not a man that you would lie. You said you would never lie to us. You are God. You're the creator of the whole universe and all the galaxies. No matter what this world is saying and thinking, because they are going down, they're getting darker and darker, and they are forsaking the Lord. But God, you have taken in another sinner under your wings right now. As you have repented and as you have received, as you have asked Jesus to come into your heart, you are now born again. Just ask him, repent of your sins, and say, Jesus, take over. Just take over and fill me. Help me to hunger. If I could say anything you did, you did all today, is I pray that you would be filled with hunger and thirst for God more than anything else. Be filled today, my friend. And those that have prayed and received Jesus into your heart right now, he will lead you and he will guide you. He is your great shepherd and he will lead his flock. I love you. God bless you. This has been your divine appointment. I will see you next time with more good news of Jesus Christ. Read my information. Comment. Tell me your testimonies. Others will be blessed by it. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. While there's still light, let us share the good news together. We are the body of Christ. Together, we shall win the lost. And we'll help others and encourage them in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you. Bye-bye. See you next time.